Hello and welcome back to the Project Hercules Diaries. This weekend we have made some progress. We have canted the engine over. You can see there the engine is over to one side so we can fit the new head and remove the new head and fit it again and remove it again. We've done that a few times already so we're getting rather quite good at it. So what can we see? Well in order to cant the engine over we've got to remove the gearbox and the gearbox plates uh, and all of the bolts that hold the engine in. The gearbox is in that box there. It's always a good practice to try and keep everything together so you know where it is when it goes back on the bike. And while the gearbox is out, we're gonna take the opportunity to drill the gearbox so we can fit the plates to the gearbox and then fit the plates to the frame so we can adjust that belt and have the gearbox bolted in properly. And then we can measure properly how much offset each sprocket needs and make some sprocket carriers to bolt to the wheel. But all that in good time. The job of the day is all around the cylinder head. Now, with the engine not bolted to the frame and canted over, it needs to be canted over because since we put this gusset in, we weren't able to remove or to fit the head with the engine in the frame. So it needs to be swung out a little bit. And what we didn't want is for it to fall out because that would be a big disaster. It's a big heavy thing. If it just fell out on the floor, we might crack some fins off the end or bend some of the header pipes or, or crack some of the casing. We don't really want that to happen. And it is quite heavy and it's, it's not something you want to be do to kind of hold this by hand while you're trying to fit the ring compressor and push the head down so the rings don't pop out until they've gone inside the sleeve there. Um, so I came up with a rather ingenious idea of using the chain that would normally go to the Dynastart, it's been the Dynastart and this is the chain, underneath the frame here with a bit of a pipe. So that chain is under tension, it allows the engine to lean away to a certain point and then stop. It's not going to damage the chain because it is a static weight, there's no big shock on it. Um, and it's, it's, it's quite, quite stable there. I could probably push the bike over before I actually push the engine out of the frame. So that works quite well. Um, so what have we done in terms of the head? Well, the head's gone in. The head's gone in with the um, rings on the head. We just put one of the rings on the head because that will give us about 95% of the compression. Now straight away, even though it's five to one compression rather than seven to one, you can feel the compression when you're pushing the head down. You can feel it up against the, the piston. When you connected up the Dynastart, you can see the, uh, the leads are on there to the Dynastart and we bowled it over. Now it doesn't um, turn the engine over anything like at the speed required to get it started. And we kind of knew that was the case, but I wanted to try it because what I didn't want to do is to make a great big decompressor and fit it to the head and get it all ready so it works really well. And then at some point in the future, somebody say, what happens if you don't use the decompressor? And we press the button and it starts just fine because that would be a little bit embarrassing. So um, we fitted that. Uh, and also, it would all, it, it would mean if the starter motor did turn it over, we wouldn't have to make the decompressor. Now, we, we thought that was um, a bit of a vain hope, but we tried it anyway. So, we definitely need to make and fit a decompressor. So, the next job over in the shed, we're going to drill the holes that will be the exit holes for the air that comes out when the decompressor is in operation. Fit the head again and just see what sort of speed we can crank the motor at. We know it turns over really quite quickly um, with no compression at all. When we fit the head and the rings uh, and the decompressor, um, there, there will be a little bit of, of compression. We think we've got uh, a surface area of about two inches, uh, equivalent of a two inch diameter hole for decompressing the mixture. So it should, should be fine. Um, but we just want to see what it's like. And then we also want to know if there's any possibility of taking the drive on the Dynastart here. Currently we've got 14 teeth. And whether we can fit one of these bad boys over here um, to gear up the starter motor, um, possibly even this one. So, so we've got to bore these out, we've got to put the keyways on them and, and get the, um, the thickness correct so that we can interchange those and we can see which one is the biggest sprocket we can get away with to give us the maximum speed to bowl the engine over. So all that's going to happen uh, the rest of the afternoon with any luck. We're just in the process of drilling it next door in the other shed. So if we manage to get that far, I'll do a couple of videos of it turning over uh, and we'll post those later on today. If not, that'll be a next weekend job. So that's where we're at. That's exactly where we're at. That's the motor out to the side of it. Gives you an idea of how big the thing is because they're the pistons towards the bottom and there aren't many um cylinders you can actually put your whole your whole fist in 
um, just gives you an appreciation of the size. So there we are, as usual, thank you for watching. More updates will follow.